Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to start working on the equipment system. The system's going to consist of quite a few working parts, uh, hopefully working together. And what we have to do is we have to recognize when we equip a weapon, apply stats to our character stats, and then also physically equip a model that represents that weapon in our player's hand. And then also make sure that that model uh, has the component of the weapon that we are equipping. Now in our system, what we're going to have is we're just going to have a couple different weapons. We're going to have like a sword and a staff or something. Whenever we equip a weapon, we're just going to search for the weapon that we equipped from like our resources folder. And then we're going to just instantiate that weapon into our player's hand and then our attack controller is uh, whenever we attack is going to look for the weapon in the player's hand and that weapon that that object will have the component on it that decides what happens when we attack now i had initially planned to make this a pretty simple straightforward system where we were just going to have like one weapon and I was going to show you how you could handle an attack. It was like a physics based attack. And this will probably be physics based attacking as well. You know, you just swing and you have a, uh, like a box collider on it and it's going to detect if it hits something. But we're going to make it where we can have different attacks for different weapons or uh, different models, different stats, all that stuff. And you can equip it from the inventory. Now, since we don't have an inventory system, we're just going to set it up now wherever we where we can just like hit a key and it will act like it was equipped from the inventory system so that when we come in with an inventory it won't be hard to get it wired up but i wanted to get this out of the way first because it's probably going to be the most complex thing we do and that's why it's taken so long to get this video out because i had already made the episode where we cover a very simple equipment system, very simple attack system. And people kind of wanted something a bit more advanced where they could switch out things. Understand that you can use this for anything, really. You can equip a bow, and that bow can do whatever it wants because the bow decides what happens when it attacks, nothing else. So you can have as many different weapons doing as many different things as you want because it's all just a simple component. And you're just attaching that component to the player. And then that component decides what happens upon attack. It can handle the cooldowns, it can handle the stats, it can handle the animations, it can handle all that stuff. So uh, I think it was worth the time I took to sit down and replan all this stuff and redesign the whole thing. And I have a pretty good idea of where we're going with it. So uh, go ahead, if, you, if you've not had your morning coffee, you might want to go ahead and do that because this is going to be a long, a long ride, I would assume. First things first though, uh, you may notice that mine looks a bit different than yours now if you have been following along. My fog is a bit uh, thicker, if you will, and I'm using a screen space fog now. It's just on my camera here, global fog. That comes in the standard assets effects uh, in the image effects. Just drop that on there and tweak the settings to look a bit gloomier and if I was actually doing this I would play with the colors and the grass and stuff to go along with that and then readjust the lighting because the fog really changes everything but I didn't like that we could see throughout into the empty world so I'm just kind of blocking that with with a screen space fog screen space fog and also in the last video we created the character stats I'm sure you remember that something like this right and then we had the base stat that we created that looks like this but what we're doing is, as this was pointed out in the comments, and we also fixed it in the comments, but you may not read the comments. Um, a couple things you can do to fix this. What's happening is each time final value is just getting uh, base value added to it, and it's never resetting. So uh, we could do this with just creating a local property for get calculated stat value so it doesn't act outside of this. So each time we call it, it creates, you know, it, it re. Uh, reinitializes the variable to zero or we can keep using final value and just reset it ourselves so we just do that and reset it to zero each time we call you can do it either way for simplicity i'm going to keep it just like that so that should fix that issue for you and another thing i want to fix in here though is the way we're doing the stat bonus and i realized this when i was planning out the combat and the equipment system 
is that this is going to look the way we have it set up. It's going to look for a specific object. So if we create a new stat bonus with the same value, it's not the same object. So it's not going to know that I want to remove just that value, right? What I want to do actually is I want to take stat bonus and just remove a value that matches it. The first one we find no reason to go through the whole list and look for something that matches it. If uh, the exact one, if we already found a value that matches it. So the way I can do that is I want to go into stat bonus and I just want to show you real quick. See, it's not just an object that has a value. It's an object that has a couple of things. So it has to match perfectly and it has to match it in memory, which ours does not. So the way I'm going to handle that is uh, the way, see how we do the for each and then we have a little Lambda expression here. We're going to do the same thing inside of this. What we're going to do is we're going to do a base additives and we're going to find just find a value that matches the stat bonus final value or bonus value, whatever it's called. So inside of this, we're going to do the same thing. Assign our value to X. And I'm going to say X bonus value is equal to stat bonus dot bonus value. Uh, sorry, needs to be a comparison there. So that's going to go through our base additives list find a value that matches the bonus uh, stat bonus value that we passed in and then it's going to apply the remove method to the result it finds which will be a stat bonus but it'll be the first one it finds and you could do this differently if you wanted to uh, remove all right or just the last one you found but we're just going to do find just for this and that's going to work just fine for us because you can you'll see the way we set up the character stats to handle adding and removing equipment that this will make that very easy. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go back into unity here and we're going to set up the hand for our player. Just get that out of the way. I'm going to create an empty on the player model. Uh, I don't know if we talked about this a lot, but I'm not an artist. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I like to mess around with stuff, but I could not, and I should not be the person to tell you how to, you know, work in Blender, make a model or Maya, Max, whatever you use. Because that's just not anything that I know a lot about. I can mess around in it and get something, but it's not something that I should be teaching. So I'm not going to be doing any modeling throughout this. We're not going to be working with any models like that. No animations and stuff like that. I mean, we'll probably animate our sword and stuff, you know, so we can attack and it will swing it around and have like an idle animation. We'll do that all in Unity, something I know something about. But we're not going to branch out into Blender and start modeling a character and stuff like that. You can find that anywhere on YouTube. Just not the focus of this tutorial, but it, it's not that hard to wire up. You know, we're going to work a bit in animations in this so you can probably understand how to trigger animations and stuff because we will be doing that in this series just not with models and stuff like that so i'm going to do hand it's going to call it to empty call it hand move it out to his right it's a right-handed player and inside of hand we would have sword right i'm going to go ahead and create that so that we can instantiate it as a prefab i'm going to create a 3d object Make it a cube, and I'm just gonna scale this. Let's see, something like, something thin like a sword. Do point 0.1, going to make it a bit longer and a bit thinner. Just something that looks kind of sword-like. So that would be 1.8, just wanna clean these numbers up, and 0.4. And then I'm going to move the hand up, just like that. So the way we'd want to do that is we'd want the anchor point of all of our weapons to be on the handle, right? So whenever we actually instantiate it, it the zero zero of the weapon would be at the handle where the hand would hold it. So if we had an actual physical hand, we would do this the same way. We would instantiate it on the hand bone. In this case, this, mo this uh, empty object is being our hand bone for us but it's gonna be in the center, right? So like if I wanted to bring this down to where the hand would be, and then move the sword to where the, the handle would be on the hand, that's fine, but whenever we instantiate it, it's not gonna be that way because we don't have the anchors and stuff set up to do that. So I'm just gonna move that up, and we're just gonna zero this uh, back down on the Y, just move the hand up to make it easier for us for this simple tutorial. 
But again, working with models and stuff, you'll want to make sure you set up the the uh, anchor points f to be on the handle. All right, pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and call this sword. And then we'd attach a sword component, or if this was a staff, a staff component, or, you know, the super duper cool staff. You can always have, like, a sword component, and then make, like, the super duper legendary sword derive from that class if you wanted to make sword have all the base functions of a sword, and then make super duper legend sword component, or, or that class, have all the cool things that that thing has. But we're going to keep it simple with just sword and staff and whatever we have. So sword, I have this sword component on it. I mean, I could call this great legendary sword of the north. It doesn't, you know, I'll just call it great legendary sword. But uh, then my component that I, my class that I create for it, I could call it great legendary sword just to keep it in the same name. Uh, but for now, that's all we need is that right there. And then I'm going to create a sword script object. Now we're not going to work on this just yet because we want to set up our interface for weapons. But for now, I'm going to just go ahead and attach that to that. And then I'm going to, we're going to add it to our resources folder. Now if you don't have a resources folder, you can just create it like a normal folder. Just click on assets and create folder and name it resources with a capital R. And this is going to allow us to dynamically load in objects into our components or what our objects, whatever we're working with. So I'm going to just drag this into my resources folder and that's going to create a prefab for me. Actually, what I'll do is I'll create another folder and I'll call this weapons and I'll put that into there. And then we could break this down into swords and staves, but uh, we're not going to have a lot of stuff to worry about. But in your game, if you plan on making this like a full blown game, organization will be key to actually seeing it through. So make sure you, you organize everything in the way that you think it should be because you're the person working on it. So inside of that, I now have my sword. That's great. So I can delete this and we have a prefab, which consists of whatever our sword is just currently just, uh, our sword component with some modif uh, modifications to the scale. That's cool. All right, so the first thing I want to create as a script that we actually work on is called iWeapon. All right, this is going to be fun. So what we need to do is we need to create a way to know that a weapon is a weapon, to know that a sword is a weapon, therefore it has an attack ability, therefore it has stats. We need to know that before we try to do anything with it. Because if in our hand, if we have the legendary staff and then the legendary sword and then the blue bow or whatever, if we have those things, we can't be looking for the legendary staff and then looking for the legendary sword because that would require two different lines of code. We would have to have that condition for each thing. So what we would look for is we'd look for a certain game object, right? We'd look for a game object, but then on that game object, there's going to be a component that we have to call. Would it be legendary sword? Would it be legendary staff? We don't know because we, all we have is a game object. And all we know is we're looking for a weapon component. We know that we're looking for a component that has an attack and that has stats. So the way that I can know for sure that the component that I'm calling is the correct component is I can look for something that is shared by all weapons. In this case, it will be I weapon, which is a way to note that it is an interface. I before whatever kind of interface it is, is interface weapon. So it's I weapon. Now you may have heard of interfaces and if you've tried to look them up and you still don't know what they are, it's probably because you read the definition is like, well, I don't understand how I'd ever use that and what the point of it is. It doesn't make any sense to me that I would use this. It just seems like I'm writing extra code. Well, the example I gave you is an example for using an actual interface to interface with something. But the definition, if you look it up is, uh, it's a way to define a contract with all the objects that it implements. And that's what it is. 
I can tell iWeapon, hey, anything that implements this has to have an attack method and it has to have a stats list. It has to have these things because I have to know, bef know for sure before I call them that it has what I need. So I know that if I am looking for a component that implements iWeapon, and we can do that by simply get component iWeapon, anything, any component that implements that will be an iWeapon component. And that's the beauty of all this. We don't have to look for a staff and a sword. We just look for an iWeapon. And then we know, ooh, iWeapon has an attack, so I can attack. iWeapon has stats, so I can get, I can get the stats. And that's all we need to know. That's a way to interface with something without knowing beforehand necessarily what it is. You don't have to write code for each possible condition. We know it's going to be an eye weapon. It's very similar to the way that we did in Interactable. Somebody asked me, why didn't you use an interface for this? And it would have worked just fine if we would have been like, you know, uh, all of the things that are Interactable uses the, uh, implements the Interactable interface. But... As you're going to see when we do this, each interactable object would then have to implement the functionality, right? And interactable, the functionality is, I wouldn't want to have to implement this in each thing. I wouldn't want to do that, but you cannot implement logic in an interface. You can only define properties that other things have to implement. So that's why we didn't do that, but it works about the same way whenever we want to interface with something. We can look for something that inherits from interactable, knowing, hey, this is an interactable. It doesn't require it to have overrides, but it does, for us, we're kind of assured, oh, it does have an override because it's interactable, and I now know that I can interact with it. Same thing, but iWeapon, we don't need functionality in iWeapon. So we're not, we, we can use an interface just fine. It's going to just define the outline for functionality. And I have went on enough about inter, uh, interfaces, but I know that a lot of people read the definition. They ask people, what is this for? When will I actually use this? I can't understand using this because all I'm doing is saying, yeah, if you use this, you have to implement this logic. But then I have to implement that logic anyway. I have to write it two times three times, four times, five, depending on how many things implemented. So what's the point? This is a good example of how you can use it. And I just, I've never actually touched on this in detail. We've, we've used interfaces in the past, but I've never touched on it in detail. So I wanted to take a second here to actually tell you, Hey, this is a pretty good use case for understanding why you could use an inter, uh, interface for something. So anyway, back to what we were doing, actually writing some code, I'm going to get rid of all this. And we're going to get rid of that. I'm going to keep the name and I'm going to take class and make it an interface. Just like that. Uh, actually, we will need a, we need to be using system.collections.generic. This is because we're going to have a stats list as a definition in our interface. So I'm going to do a property, just like we have done in the past, prop tab over twice it's going to be a list of base stat and I'm going to call it whoop, I'm going to call it stats all oh, right I don't need to do that. set the set it as public you're using base stat as a way to define stats for weapons now why are we doing that that's because not only do we already have it defined but we also have the ability to, if we wanted to, add stat bonuses to these base stats. And it also will match our character stats perfectly. So we can have a base value, a stat name, and a stat description. And we can compare that to the player. So if we want to equip a sword that only has a power and a vitality stat, then we can just look for, does the player have a vitality stat? Yes, okay, add this weapons vitality bonus to the vitality stat it matches perfectly it's easy to do same for the power stat this way we can also have weapons that have power and vitality but also a different stat that not all weapons have or we can have um like our staves give an intellect bonus right so we're going to write our our item database in json 
And the great thing about that is we don't have to follow a specific schematic because of the way we set up our stats. So we can have different things giving different bonuses. We don't have to have each thing. Yeah, well, this doesn't have power, so it's zero. This doesn't have intellect, so it's zero. No, we just don't write that in JSON. We just don't write it there. And it can still do it because we're looking, hey, I'm trying to find a stat that matches this. I'm trying to find a stat that matches that. And we can do that very easily because of the way we have this set up. I'm not going to say and argue it's the, the cleanest way to handle this, but it's very simple. And again, that's the whole point of all of this. So we got base stat. The next thing I want to do is I want to define a method for perform attack. We'll call it perform attack. So now each weapon will have a method called perform attack. And for now, it's all we need in our interface for our weapons. Notice that I actually create a script file for iWeapon. You could define this however you want. If you could define multiple interfaces in a single script file, but I prefer to have, I lose this, this organization when I'm doing tutorials because I, I go for speed and efficiency <laughs> over what I would actually like to work in. But when I'm actually working, I prefer to have one script file has one class or one interface or whatever. I like to have it that way so I can go through and I can search my, my files and find what I'm looking for instead of having to search for a file that has it in it and it be something that has, you know, 2000 lines or something else, but then there's, oh, there's my interface. So I'm just going to keep it all separate and then just implement it from there. So with weapon interface setup, create a new script file, and I'm going to call this sword. Now for the system to work, what in the world for the system to, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Don't put the D before the, why are you doing that? S W O R D enter. There we go. Okay. Did it really? No, it's a different one. How'd that happen? Oh yeah. In this, uh, for the system to work, we're going to have to, we created the interface, we're going to have to create the actual first weapon that we test it with. Then we're going to create an inventory, uh, well, the start of an inventory, because we're just going to set it up so that we, so we can create an item that is a sword, and then we're going to equip that item like we kind of would if we had an inventory, but not really, just to test out the equipment part of it. And then we also have to create a weapon controller for the player. Something that handles, oh, whenever you hit the attack button, look for the weapon, fire the attack method on that weapon, and all that stuff. And it's also going to handle equipping the weapon physically in the player's hand. So that's all we have to create in this. Uh, it's going to take us a bit, like I said. So in Sword, we're going to inherit from model behavior, but we're also going to do, uh, going to do something else. As you know, we can only inherit from one class, right? That's just how C-sharp is. And, but I mean, there's a chain. You can inherit from that class, that class can inherit from something else. But we can implement all the interfaces we'd like. So I want to implement I weapon. So it's going to do a comma after the interface. And then you're going to type in your interface name. And when you do that, it's going to say, hey, there's something wrong here. And what it's saying is you're agreeing to have certain properties in this implementation that you do not have. So that's an error. I'm going to right click on that in Visual Studio. So I'm going to do implement interface, just like that. And what that's going to do is going to bring in what we agreed to bring in right here. But it's going to set these up um, with a getter and a setter. And uh, it's going to throw an exception if we don't implement these. That's fine for now. What I would like to do, for now what I'm going to do actually, is I'm just going to redo this to be a list of base stat. It's called stats. All right, and then I'm just gonna throw a message in here. Sword attack. All right, just like that. So now our sword is set up, uh, at least for enough for us to use, right? What I would like to do 
So we got the sword set up, we've got the interface set up. I want to come into character stats. And in character stats, we're going to set up a way to add and remove bonuses to the character stats. This is probably something we'll only use on the player, but we can use character stats for our enemies as well, and we probably will. That's kind of the point of keeping it that way. So in here, what I want is a couple of methods. So I'm gonna do a public, we're accessing it outside of this. It's gonna return nothing, and I wanna call it add stat bonus. So this is something we're going to call whenever we equip a sword or something so that we can add this, the stats to our player. So add stat bonus and it needs a stat bonus object and I'm just going to call it stat bonus. Actually what we'll do is we'll be able to pass in a list of stat bonuses because we don't want to pass in one at a time then have to handle that like that. So we'll do a list of stat bonuses so that if we equip a sword that has, you know, three different stats on it, power, vitality, and, and defense, we want to be able to pass that whole list in to this and then it will handle it one at a time. It'll say, okay, now I'm looking for the power. I'm looking for the vitality. I'm looking for the defense. And it will add each bonus to the new stat. And the way we're going to handle this is uh, kind of similar to how we handled it in base stat, right? We're going in uh, and we're just adding it to the list, but we're going to be using these methods. We didn't write these for nothing. We're going to be using these whenever we find the proper stat to add the bonus to. So I'm going to be using a for each. You can use a for if you'd like, it's up to you. I'm going to use a for each to keep this simple. And we're going to loop through each of the stat bonuses. So I want to do uh, stat bonus, stat bonus, in stat bonuses. So the reason we're looping through each stat bonus instead of say the stats is because we could be passing in a stat bonus of, you know, we have six stat bonuses. Well, we don't have to loop through each stat and then loop through each stat bonus because we don't know how many stats we have versus how many stat bonuses we have, right? If we're just passing in two stat bonuses and we have seven stats, we don't have to loop through each stat and then on that loop through each stat bonus to add it. We're just going to go through each stat bonus this way. And then inside of that, we're going to find the proper stat to add that matches that stat bonus. See if it makes sense when I do it like this. So I'm going to do stat bonuses. Stat. Oh, no, we're going to do stats. Let's do stats now. So in this, we're going to do stats, which is our list of stats we're adding stats to. And I'm going to do a find. Okay? So we've just used this in our base stat. But what this is going to do is we're going to pass it a couple parameters. It's going to go through the stats and look for something that matches it. And when it finds it, find, or this line here, will equal the object that it found. So to do that, I'm going to do x, again, assign the value to x, and I'm going to say x dot, uh, let's do our stat bonus. Let's see, we'll make it the name. Looking for the name that matches. We could probably have IDs, something to identify as just a number. Uh, but we have it set up with just a string name, so we'll just use that for now. And then I want to go into stat, oops, sorry, do uh, is equal to stat bonus, the object that we are assigning the value of our for each to. Keep in mind, we have like three different stat bonuses going on here, but it's that one. <laughs> and I want the, uh, oh, no, 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 my bad. We need a stat base, base stat. I was like, what is this? This is not right. There we go. I was like, how can I get the name from the stat bonus? It has no idea. But this is what I want to do. Stat bonus then is equal to name. Sorry about that. So make sure it's base stat. I was just, I was confused. I confused myself there. 
because we're passing in a list of base stats from the weapon, right? And then we're going to loop through each one. We're calling it stat bonus because it is the bonus that we're going to add to the stat, as you'll see in a second. But we're, what we're then doing is looking to see if we have a stat that matches the name of the stat from the weapon. We most likely will. I doubt that there's any case where we will have a weapon that has a stat that's just pointless, right? But all we have to do is actually find the correct one to add the bonus to. So then I'll do add stat bonus on the find. And this needs a stat bonus object. So I want to do stat bonus. Get the actual object, the class there. And actually we're going to make a new stat bonus. New stat bonus. And this is where it all comes together. We have the base stat. We have to make a new stat bonus out of the base stat value. So I'll do a stat bonus. The actual stat bonus that we are on in our for each. And I will get the base value of that. And it will take that, create a stat bonus out of it, which will assign it to the bonus value of stat bonus because it's what the constructor does. And then it will take that, pass it to the add stat bonus method right here of the current, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Sorry. Of the current stat that we found. I know that sounds crazy. That sounds like, why are we doing it that way? But this isn't a, a terrible way to handle it. We're not going to be equipping and unequipping weapons every frame, right? It's not something that's going to be happening a lot. But we want to make sure that we do it where we find the correct stat we create a proper stat bonus out of it, something that we can modify the same way as every other stat bonus. We're trying to keep everything modular here. And it's going to add it to that current stat. That's exactly what we want. It's going to do it for each one we pass in. We're passing in a whole list of things. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that, make another one here, call it remove stat bonus. And we're going to call this whenever we unequip a weapon. Okay, so let's say we have a sword equipped and it adds a stat bonus. When we unequip that sword, we have to remove the stats that that sword would have given to our character. Because he can't unequip a sword and have nothing and still have the same stats. That would be called a bug. <laughs> so we don't want that. So we do it the same way, except what we do here is we remove stat bonus from the stat that we found that matches the name. And we'll do that for each one. Handled that, that is done. We'll probably have to fix something when we come back to it. But that's pretty much all we have to do for the character stats. And note, we are defining the character stats within the character stats. So we can't actually use this for our enemies and stuff like that because the component itself has the values defined. But the way I would do this is in player or something, I would find the character stats component and then set up the stats that way. And then on the enemies, say we have a goblin. Well, the goblin has a goblin component, but it also has a character stats component. So the goblin component would reference the character stats component and set up the stats list that way. So each goblin knows the stats. And then we can create a skeleton and it will have different stats because the skeleton component is what defines the character stats stats list all supposed to come together and be nice we'll see this is a very complex thing to do that's why i'm kind of excited about it and also it really really stresses me out but um i'm enjoying doing i'm enjoying doing it and i hope you guys are enjoying watching it i know i'm not producing them enough but uh, i hope i hope it's okay that, that we're getting them out slowly i know i know it takes me a bit but i i do have a couple of jobs actually so it's it's uh it's like finding time when there is no time is kind of difficult but yeah, i'm doing it so what i want to do now is we we're going to create the let's create the first of all we're going to create an item class and this is something we're going to work on later on but we need it for now because we don't want to set up the whole system to work off of something that we're not going to be using in the future Right, we don't want to design this whole thing just for the equipment system to work and then when we make the inventory system have to go back in and change a lot of stuff because that's not how we would do it with an inventory system. We want to make sure we design it from the beginning to be something similar to how we want it to be so we don't have to change a lot. 
Now, I'm sure we'll have to change some things, but we're trying to avoid changing the entire code base because we want to add one feature in. That's, that's a problem if we have to do that. All right, so this does not need to inherit from on a behavior. It's just going to be an object that contains a few properties, and that's all we need for it to be. For now, all we need to test this is a public, we're gonna make a list, so I'm just going to make this the generic namespace because we need a generic list. Make it a list of base stats. As you see, we're using that to define the stats for our items, all of our items, but also our weapons. Oh, actually that needs to be, I should have done this automatically. Get set, there we go. And then a property for the value that's going to help us find the proper prefab in our folder, right? So if we have a name, well, the name might differ from the name of the object that it's going to instantiate. Let's say we have 10 swords. Out of those 10 swords, the difference is, you know, attacks or stats but the model's the same. A lot of games do that where that cuts down on the amount of art assets that have to be created, but they can also create the, the variation of different items with stat combinations and attacks. So we can use the same models, use the same prefabs, but they have different stats. You know what I'm saying? So to do that, we want to make sure that we also have a slug of some kind, something that defines what this item is other than its name, right? Not an ID, but like, um, I'll just show you real quick. We'll have a string and I will call this, I keep not hitting enter instead of doing that. I will call this object slug. So this is going to be a lowercase, no space name of the item. Pretty much what it's going to be but if it's like the legendary great sword and then we have the super legendary great sword and the only difference is the stats then they will both look for the same prefab and then we'll just change the stats on the prefab so we only have one model one prefab keeping it simple i want to set up a constructor so public item we've done this a hundred times it's going to have a list passed into it of base stat called underscore stats. Now this is just how I'm going to differentiate between stats and stats. It's a bit easier this way for me. I usually, it's the thing, I usually do it this way, but in videos, I don't even think about like uh, doing things like this to make it easier in the future. I already have everything planned out, so I just kind of write it as it comes. And it never comes out like I would actually type it. I would actually write it in my own, my own projects. Not that it's bad or anything, it's just a different style. Then I'll have a string that will be the object. So you got it. And then we'll assign the values, just like usual. Stats is equal to underscore stats. And we'll make sure we just specify, we don't have to, but I like to. This dot object slug is equal to object slug and there is our item for now when we come back in later we'll add a name and description and all that but we don't care about that for this purpose so we're going to go back into unity and i'm going to create another script and i want to call this inventory inventory controller and for now it's just going to be a way we define a, an item and then I equip that item. That's all it's going to be. There's not going to be any interface or, or UI or anything. It's going to be very simple for now. In the future, obviously, it'll be a full-blown inventory, but not just yet. All right, so what this will need, let's see. This will need a reference to the player's weapon controller, which we don't actually have yet, but it will need to know the values it has to assign the item that we equipped to, and that'll be all in the player weapon controller or player Oh, yeah, play weapon controller, that'd be fine. So we can have a direct reference where we just assign it in the inspector. 
Um, since the player weapon controller would be the only one in the entire scene, we could just set up another singleton. Hmm. For now, we'll just do a direct reference. I think that's fine. Uh, I can't actually define it because I don't have the the class, but that's fine. We'll set up our sword. So I'm going to do a public item. I want to call it sword. Item is the item type that we just created. And this is not how we would define items. Again, this is just for testing. We would define them in JSON and then bring them in and build a whole database out of the JSON. So I'm going to need a start. And I feel like Visual Studio is broken again. Now in start, what we're going to do is we're going to build a stat list because we need something to play around with. So I need generic. So we're going to build a stat list and make a list out of base stat. Yeah, it's broken. I'm gonna call it stat list and I would just call it, uh, again, just making it for this one specific test. So sword, 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 sword stats. And then we'll just make a new list called base stat. All right, so we've defined, we define the list. Now let's do sword stats and we're going to add a stat to it. And to do that, we're going to do add new base stat. And in this, we're going to define a base value. And then we're going to define, it's not working for me. That's great. I love it. Define, I believe a name <laughs> and then a description, I guess your power level. I think that's how it works. I don't remember. It's not telling me. So we have our stats set up. Now let's do, uh, let's say sword is equal to new item. I'm going to create a new item. Again, the item class we just made, it needs a stat list, which is why we created the stat list and an object slug. So I'm going to pass it to sword stats, which contains the power stat of six. And then I'm going to pass it an object slug, which is just sword. Well, yeah, so yes, yeah, sword. That'd be fine because it is the legendary super sword or whatever we called it, but it's going to pull just from the simple sword object but it's going to create it with sword stats. Okay, so now we need a way to equip that weapon. But since we don't have the player weapon controller set up yet, we can't really do anything like that. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity. Now we've created a lot in this episode, I know. We're going to create a new C Sharp script. C Sharp script. Why is it doing that? And I'm going to call it player weapon controller. Great. Now this is where it gets fun and a little messy. So this is going to need a reference to the player's hand. We know that. So we'll set up a public game object and we'll just assign this in the inspector to keep it simple. We'll call it player hand. And it's also going to need to know uh, what weapon is equipped. Let's see, we could do that with just a simple property and be fine. The reason player hand is not a property and the reason I, I, I don't use properties sometimes for things like that is because they're not properly serialized in the Unity UI stuff. So we cannot see it in the inspector. They don't actually expose that information in the inspector. You can find an extension on the uh, wiki that has all those, ex all those script files on it that actually exposes stuff like that to the inspector, but that's just not, there's no reason to do that for this tutorial. So we're not going to worry about it. I'm going to call this equipped weapon. Wait, no, that's actually not what I want to call that. It's actually just a game object. We'll say, and I'm going to call it equipped weapon. There we go. Looks fine. And what we'll need in this is we'll need a, a way to equip a weapon, right? So I'm going to create a method that's public so that our inventory can find it called equip weapon. Now, if you were using this same system, it'd be very easy for you to do this, uh, to equip, say a helmet or a ring or something you would probably just really want to not keep calling it equip weapon, right? 
But since we're only working with weapons, because that's the important part here, but applying the stats and instantiating the models and stuff, that's all going to be the same if you want to handle different types of equipment. But I'm only focusing on the weapon because it's what we need to have a combat system, right? So that's the only reason I'm focusing on that. But you could easily change this to accept all types of things and then equip them in the correct, uh, on the correct bone, if you will, like our hand. So if it's the weapon type, it would equip to the hand. If it's the helmet type, it would equip, uh, equip to the head bone, things like that. But we're keeping it very simple here. But again, it's very easy to extend how you, how you want to do it. So that's what we need. We need to also know what item we're trying to equip. So we're going to just pass an item object because it already is an item. And that keeps it kind of uniform for us so we can pass the item around if we need to. Now let's call it item to equip. And then the first of all, I want to check to see, is there an item equipped currently? Do we have a weapon equipped currently? So to do that, I'm just going to check to see if equipped weapon is a thing. I'm just going to say, is it not null? If it's not null, that means there's something there, right? So if it is not null, we have to destroy what it is. And what we would destroy is the item in the player's hand. And this is where it gets nice and messy for us. So if it is not null, that means there's an item. So we want to destroy the item in the player's hand. But how do we find that item? Well, I have the player's hand. And we know there's only going to be one item in the player's hand, right? So I can do a find, not find. I can do a transform, go through the transform component and do get child. Now this is not, you, you've probably heard a lot of things like, oh, don't, uh, don't use find and, and don't use get component and don't use find child or get child because it's inefficient. And those things need more context when they're said like that. They are inefficient. If you're doing them every frame, they are inefficient if you're doing them more than you need to be doing them. But if you do them upon an action, like we're doing here, when we equip a weapon, we're going to look for a child. You're not going to notice for one second, one second, obviously less than one second, that something is happening because we're not doing nearly enough to do any kind of impact on performance. There are times when you need to use things like that. And there are times when there's a better method. But for now, like I said, this is perfectly fine for what we're doing. And let's grab the game object. So it's going to destroy the one that's currently in the hand. If there is a weapon equipped, we have to also remove the stats whenever we unequip the weapon. So to handle that, we'll go get component, like I was just saying. And I want to go to the character stats. Now you could set up a reference in the inspector for this, right? If you wanted to do a void get component, you could set up a reference that actually grabs a component in start maybe which we could do that right now just to show you how we could handle that so weapon controller is always going to be there so i can do a void start and in start we would grab a reference to it so i'm just going to do a uh, character stats is um, character stats and we could do the same for uh, the weapon in the player's hand, but it's going to change every time we equip something. So it's not really necessary to do. And then character stats is equal to get component character stats. So now down here, we can use character stats, remove stat bonus. Now we set that up in the character stats. We can do remove stat bonus, but we have to pass it a list of stats to remove. So how do we get that? Well, equipped weapon is a an eye weapon, which means it has stats. We know that for sure. So I can do equipped weapon dot get component. Now watch how cool this is. We can do eye weapon interface weapon. We know that if it is a weapon, it has this interface. If it has this interface, it has stats. And then we can just grab the stats list. It's going to remove that from our player's stats pretty cool at least if we did this correctly in here we'll have to see when we get there though all right so we did that and now our hand is empty so we can add the weapon to our hand how should we handle doing that well i want to set equipped weapon the property that we created the game object to be equal to an instantiation of 
the one that we're instantiating. So we're going to instantiate something that we loaded from resources, right? And it also, it needs to be uh, casted as a game object, just like that, so that the we know that we're grabbing that component from the instantiation. So we'll go through our resources folder. That's why we put our prefabs in resources. We're gonna go through a resources folder. We're gonna do a load. And we're gonna load a game object. But what game object are we going to load? Now we know that the prefab is in the weapons folder. And if we're equipping something, at least in our case, it will be in the weapons folder because we can only equip weapons. If you're using armor and stuff, you would actually have a type, right? You have an item type to know where to equip it to. So you could check your item type and say, go through the folder that matches this item type. So I could do like item type slash and go through that. But we don't have to worry about that because we know it is a weapon. So we're gonna go through weapon slash and then find the object slug, whatever matches that. So I'm gonna do item to equip, which is the one we passed into equip weapon dot object slug just like that. So that will be sword in this case because we only have one weapon in the game so far. So if I go into uh, let it load, if I go into weapons, it's called great legendary sword, right? So I want to call this sword. Now the name of the sword can still be great legendary sword, but the prefab is called sword. And that's the thing. Notice that we don't actually have weapon stats because we equipped a weapon. It's just the player stats get modified. So we don't have to worry about the prefab having, you know, set stats because we are resetting those when we equip it. So we're instantiating it there and that's going to, uh, instantiate the, the sword, but we also want to set the position that we instantiate it. That's going to be in the player hand dot transform dot position. So we're going to instantiate it at that location. And we're also going to set it to be the child of player hand, so it moves around with it. So if we animate the player hand, the sword will also be, it'll appear to be animated because it's following the hand around. But we also have to set the rotation just in case our hand is, you know, it's moved a certain way when we equip it. It's fine. It will uh, assume that rotation. So I will do player hand dot transform dot rotation and that's going to be all we need for that and I then want to set the let's see we could do a we could set the stats on the equipped weapon so do uh, get component we'll do I weapon because that's the uh, what we know it's going to be we don't know it's going to be a sword right so we can't say sword and then get the stats and set it to be equal to the item to equip stats. Now this may not be the most efficient way. So we're going to definitely come back into into this and figure out a faster way to do this, but we won't notice a performance hit for sure in, in our game, but I want to handle this a bit differently in the future. But just for now, we want to just copy over the stats list to the weapon that's equipped list. Well, why am I doing that again? Let's see if it's, Oh, right. I have to do that to know what stats to remove when I unequip it. Right. Okay. So that's fine. We'll probably change that though. So, yeah. We'll leave it for now though. And then I want to set the parent. So equipped weapon dot transform dot set parent. Make sure you're using set parent to change parents. Very important. You do that. It's going to be to the player hand and it requires a transform component. So we're going to do player hand dot transform. So now it is parented to uh, the player's hand. Great. And all that seems fine, but there's one thing we're not doing. We're not adding the weapons stats to the character just yet. So the way I can do that is I have a reference to character stats and I can do add stat bonus. And we're going to pass it a list. We could do equipped weapon dot stats or dot. Oh, we have to get the, get the component for that now. We'll do item to equip dot stats. 
and that will pass in the value that we passed in here. And that seems to be fine. Let me look. Yeah, that, that looks fine. We'll probably have an error soon, but we'll come back to it. And then I also need a public void perform attack. Now this is what the, let's call it, because that matches the weapons. What's this called? Player, or perform weapon attack. And this is something we're going to use. Uh, we're going to call this method whenever we hit the attack key or whatever it is that we're going to be using. So then I want to say equipped weapon, which is in this case, the sword, which is an eye weapon. I'm trying to stress that. So you understand what's going on with the interface. I'm going to do get component. Now we're going to assign this component when we equip the weapon be a bit quicker for us because we wouldn't have to get the component each time we attack. Let's do that. But I'll just show you real quick what we'll do. We'll do I weapon dot perform attack dot perform attack. So we're grabbing that, grabbing the weapon that the equipped weapon, the actual component the equipped weapon has and doing perform attack which is on our sword. You can see here, it'll say sword attack because it's a sword. If we had a staff, it would say, you know, staff attack. If I made it say staff attack, but uh, we could, let's see, should we do that? Yeah, we'll just set it up for now. We'll do a I weapon equipped weapon. Hmm, I can't name it that equipped weapon. I don't know. Yeah, we'll just name it that. I mean, <laughs> It's a different type, so maybe we won't get too, too confused with it. But equipped weapon, and then whenever we assign it, I'll assign it at the top here so we don't get lost with it, is get component. Actually, I'll assign it below where we instantiate it so we can actually do it properly. Get component. And we are getting the I weapon. I'm all over the place here. Of equipped weapon there we go there we go looks good so now we can use this see that's going to be confusing <laughs> name here something different because that is confusing use this to do that all right that'd be fine so it saved us something there i guess too so it's fine and then also to do that and that's going to save us a couple calls or a couple uh, get components, which is good. All right, now for testing purposes, I'm gonna add a log in here. Equipped weapon dot, uh, no, we're, yeah, again, we're gonna use equipped weapon dot stats. Zero, <laughs> something so we can see that the weapon is equipped, right? And then perform attack, that'll call it from the sword. That's fine. Everything looks okay here. So now we can jump back over to our inventory, our inventory controller. And what we need here, like I said earlier, we need a reference to the weapon controller. So I'm just going to do it. We're going to assign it in the inspector. There's a couple of options you can do, but for simplicity, we're going to do it just like this. Player weapon controller and call it player weapon Controller. Control. Controller. Then we're going to take this and we're going to have a, an update. We're going to check for input because we're going to test it. Um, we're going to test equipping with like a key. We're going to hit V and it's going to equip the sword, right? That's how we're going to simulate the inventory for now. So I'm going to do if uh, input.get key. We're going to use a simple key, key down key code, we're looking for the key code of, we'll say V, just like that. And inside of this, we're gonna do player weapon controller, uh, dot equip weapon, nope, dot equip weapon, and then pass it the sword. Uh, just like that, so now when we hit V, it'll find the player weapon controller and pass the equip weapon method the sword. So we have to assign that in the inspector real quick. And I'm sure a couple other things too. So I'm gonna go into my scripts. 
I'm going to take the inventory controller and I'm going to put it on the player. We might have its own object in the future. And then I'm going to take the player weapon controller and drop it on the player as well. Now this needs a reference to the player weapon controller. So what I can do is in start, we could say player weapon controller since it's on the same object is equal to get component player weapon controller. We could have assigned it inspector, but we'll just do it this way because it's already set up for that weapon controller, just like that. All right, so now that should be lined up for us. Uh, let's see. The player weapon controller needs the hand as well. So we'll go into grab the hand and drop it on the player weapon controller player hand field. And that should give us access to the hand so we can spawn the sword on his hand. Let's see what errors we have and where we are at. All right, no starting up error, so that's good. And I hit V. All right, we have an error. I'm guessing it's, yeah, finding the weapon is, it's an error. All right, so item to equip slug, just start with the obvious. If I go to the inventory, it's creating it with sword as the slug, right? And that matches sword. Okay, so it does match. It's under weapons, though. Is it under weapons? It's always best to start with the obvious with this kind of thing. It's under weapon. So we're going to replace that because that's obviously an error. May not be the only one, but it's definitely an error. All right, now we're going to hit V again. Okay, and the sword equips, so we get through that, but then we also throw another error. Let's see what the error is here. Character stats dot add stat bonus. Okay, so does our player, let's see, does our player have a character stats component? Does not, we did not add that. So we need to do that. And since we have it set up so that on start, we add a couple stats to whatever has, whatever has this, that should work just fine, just like that. And try it again. Very simple error so far, so it's good. Hit V, okay, so no error, let me talk to you. No error upon equipping the weapon. New stat bonus initiated, so that works fine. Um, base stat, I don't know what that's calling from. Oh, right, I need to do a base value or something like that. No, no, we'll do calculated value. Dot get calculated stat value. Okay, and then three, which I'm guessing is what? Oh, I don't want to do that. I need that every time. And then interact with them. Okay, so that was from the NPC. That's fine. Not even what we're working on. Just misclick. Loads again. Hit V, equips. New stat bonus initiated, and then six. So that's stat value. That's good. And the the big thing is though, is if I hit V again, will it equip a sword and delete that one? Okay, so it's just there, which means it all happened in the same frame, which it should. And what happened was it removed the one that was already there and added a new one. And if everything is right, my stats should still be the same on base stat because removing the base or, or the, uh, the actual stat bonuses whenever we remove it. So that should just take it away, be a fresh base value again, add the bonuses to it, and it should be fine. <laughs> Fingers crossed, it should be fine. So V, sword equips, and that is a good start to the equipment system. I don't know how long this has gone on for so far. Okay, it's been an hour and 15 minutes, so um, the edited version might be a bit less than that, but that's definitely long enough for one episode. The next episode, we'll probably touch on setting up the attacks and maybe make a couple different weapons to test the equipping. And then after we get that with, the, with a couple attacks in and uh, get you understanding how to create different attacks and different weapons, we might actually start on the inventory, which will really bring everything together make everything a, a full loop so we can actually use it in game for something. 
But that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Have any questions? Feel free to ask me in the comments below. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.